I'm Sarah, queen of helping you reclaim your confidence and also take back the time and energy that bad body image has stolen from you in the process. I just interviewed one of my most badass clients of all time, Lydia. Lydia is an ex-D1 swimmer who came to me at the end of her college career because she knew she was transitioning from a time in her life where she was exercising constantly and her body was in its tip-top physical form to living real life outside of college. And she knew that she wanted to feel really confident in how she took care of herself once her swim career had ended. Lydia is what I would call a rock star client and catching up with her on how she's maintained so much of the work and the changes that we made together through all of this time has been such an empowering conversation and I can't wait for you to see it. Lydia, I'm so happy that we're here. We were just looking at my calendar. Our first call, I think our discovery call, was August of 2021. So that's over two years ago now, almost two and a quarter years. And that's I crazy. I've known you for that long, but we were just catching up before we started recording this because we've stayed in touch since your program ended, which would have been like a year and a half ago at least, <laughs> almost two years ago as well. And you feel like a genuine friend to me. Somehow, we have still not met in person, which is the beauty of social media and remote work. But yeah, I'm really happy that you're here. It's always nice to catch up. You and I have caught up multiple times since your program ended, but mm -hmm. including six weeks ago, but it still feels like so long. I know. But yeah, I'm so happy you're here. Me too. I think we first connected over TikTok, right? Is that what you remember? Yeah, one of the social media apps. Yeah, I can't remember specifically which one, but definitely one of them. Yeah. Did I pop up on your feed? Yeah, you definitely did. And I feel like I had been following your Instagram for a while. I must have seen a TikTok of you, I don't know, doing you. Yeah, it's been a long time, but if I remember right, you, I remember seeing your face, your name for the first time on TikTok mm -hmm. in my comments. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think I shared something from where we're both from, where you summer, where I grew up, which is Cape Cod, Nantucket, that yeah. area. And I think you commented mm -hmm. something like, oh my God, so cool. I've been here, I'm from here, something like that, or I love it here. And I always love when I have a personal connection with people that follow me on socials, people that I end up working with. So we naturally yeah. started talking. And then, yeah, it turned out that we have mutual friends, not mutual best friends, but mm -hmm. acquaintances. Yeah. Like I knew that you knew and things like that, but we didn't know each other. So super interesting but yeah. yeah and since then we've become truly feel like little sister bf kind of vibes but anyway thinking about that time in your life over two years ago now where were you at in life what was going on in your life in august of 2021 i was on nantucket working and i remember filling out your survey of discovery call and summer's always a weird time you're out partying and you're eating a lot of food and it's sometimes there's less time to exercise and you just feel blah and gross and so i think i was probably having one of those moments and i was entering my fifth year at Wheaton about to go back and swim because of COVID but I just remember just feeling down and not having a ton of body confidence or just confidence in general I was having fun and like I love life and I was super excited to go back to Wheaton but yeah something in me I was just like I think I could really benefit from this and I'm just gonna try it out and see and it ended up being great it was amazing yes I would love if you could explain a little bit the structure of athleticism that you had in college because you were a college athlete so in the summers for you that's pretty much your off season like you're still active but that's your off season in a way and so I remember when we talked you were about to start your senior year so you were about to start your last swim season from what I remember because I had to learn this while we were working together as a normal person trying to understand this is what I remember your swim season is pretty much the entire school year more or less and so you're super active for like pretty much the whole school year like tell me about your um your workout schedule in a swim season what did that yeah. look like we would start training as a team end of september probably around september 17th ish time of september and then from there we would train through february and then some would go on to train through march for ncaa's but the regular season ends at championship season in February. And so then from September to March, it's swimming every day, two hour practices most days, except for Wednesdays were like 90 minutes. And then so not much less, but. So chill, only an hour and a half. 
Yeah. And then we wouldn't train on the weekends all the time because we would have swim meets or we'd have a Saturday morning practice, but that was not like rare, but we had a lot of swim meets. And then we would have lifts three days a week and those were an hour each. And then most, and when we didn't have lifts, we were doing dry land. So we would have to be there 30 minutes before we got in the pool. So if practice was at two, you were there. Actually, that was only on Fridays. If practice was at three, you'd have to be there at 2.30 for dry land or abs depending on where we were in the season and everything and that was pretty much the schedule dry (laughs) land or abs can you explain what lift and dry land look like i'm assuming abs is probably the hell that it sounds like yeah lifting is just you're in the weight room squatting benching the whole shebang and that was three days a week and then dry land is just here just on deck doing a lot of body weight exercises and then jump roping or medicine balls, which are just like throwdowns with weighted, squishy, I don't know, balls. And then, yeah, so that just varied dependent on our assistant coach was great at it. And so she would come up with these circuits and dry land exercises and we would just do them. Didn't think twice about them. They were painful at times, but yeah, it was good. And then, yeah, abs are just abs. And you, I remember we talked a lot about in our work together, which we'll get to that as well, but yeah, it's a lot of physical activity. So it's a lot on your body and it's a lot required of your body as far as energy and yeah yeah. so when we talked that's what you were going back into you're about to get back into that and start your last season soon and I remember us talking in the very beginning of our program was going to run through your first semester and our goal was to set you up to have graduated from our work together and have a really strong second your last semester on your own as well and yeah going into that last season what were you nervous about? I think the end of a sport that I had been doing for, I think it was like 16 or 17 years. I started when I was in first grade. So swimming, I knew swimming more than I knew my life without swimming. That's terrifying. Just to, yeah, I don't know. And swimming was my outlet. It was so many things to me. So the fact that I wasn't going to necessarily have that title of a swimmer, like Lydia's a swimmer, messed with me. And like, it was just hard to wrap my head around. And yeah, so I think I was nervous for that. And just, I don't know, just the ending, like what comes next after graduation and like the unknown of like where you're going to be after graduation is also terrifying. Yeah, so I think that was was yeah just what the effects of the sport ending and not necessarily having it in my life as like how it had been for most of my life what that was going to do to me but yeah everything from ending that really intensive workout structure and Mm -hmm. knowing because you've had off seasons in the past but this is life is now the off season in a way knowing that your body's going to change knowing that you're not necessarily coming back to that structure after a summer of your body changing having this idea that you're going to be able to like get back in shape because we talked about that as well i remember knowing that wasn't coming and then also navigating your identity outside of what you look like as well like we talked a lot about in our work together remember we had one call where we literally made a chart of like potential career paths for you because you were just trying to figure out how and if swim would fit into your life how sports would fit into your life how to feel the same passion that you had felt for swim for so long so yeah really meshing physical habits after swim when you didn't have swim be your source of athleticism anymore and it also dictated a lot of your eating in a lot of ways like you very consistent routine with food and you knew what your body needed during a swim season navigating Mm -hmm. outside of that and then figuring out like who you are outside of again like you said being a swimmer yeah really crazy like moment of transition in your life that you're going through yeah it was big huge super huge yeah and I find that's really common with a lot of the people that I work with they are in a period of transition I work with a lot of people who are about to graduate college or just graduated Mm -hmm. college I even work now with younger girls and sometimes boys who are going into college yeah um, which is a really amazing experience but people that just got new jobs or just left a really toxic job Mm -hmm. and don't know what's next or they just had they a just baby, had a baby. Just got married. something like something that where it's life up is up in the air, air. Really we don't really know what's coming next yeah it's it's a scary spot to be in mm-hmm. thinking about it i remember starting i don't know i think i definitely cried on our calls but I tend to do that a lot. But yeah, I, yeah, going back to the talking about how I was going to stay in shape, it's still, 
it's still a struggle to get my head out of that mindset of, okay, I'm not a swimmer. I'm not going to look. I look at pictures of me when I swam in my peak season. And that's in February and March when I'm like peak athleticism performance yeah. to go. And I don't look, I was definitely, I was healthy because I knew, I knew what I was doing and I knew it wasn't unhealthy and I felt healthy, but I could look like, I don't know. I look like a stick and I have shown people and like, look at this and they're like, oh my God, what? Like you were just, like a tiny and I'm like, yeah. And that also, I know I didn't really need you to reaffirm it. But I don't know, it's so looking at those photos and then also looking at myself now, I feel healthy and I am content with my body. There's definitely always those times where you're like bloated today. I don't know, but yeah, it's like it comes with being a woman too. Yeah, because a lot of our work together <laughs> when you were in your season, like regardless of your how shredded you were at the time, yeah, goes in and out of cycles of being absolutely shredded. It's insane. But yeah, you had the those moments frequently and we talked about them everything from bloated for various reasons we were trying yeah. to figure out how to make your periods more comfortable how to make your eating more comfortable your digestion all of that even when you were in season even when you were potentially smaller than you are now or more toned or whatever we compare ourselves yeah. to and it's so interesting how with that evidence in mind it doesn't actually matter like what you look like it's those thoughts will still come up so it's just navigating how you respond to them and i feel yeah. like we did so much of that in our work together so i'm curious for you mentioning like how scary it was to be in this period of transition where you didn't know what was coming next what was it like then entering our work together and knowing that you had me on your team essentially and somebody you could ask questions to, somebody that was consistently there for you to hold you accountable and I'm a no bullshit kind of coach. That's why I like to work with me because yeah. you know that I'm going to tell you if you're being silly or being yeah. rational or you're lying to yourself or whatever the hell it is. But what was that like having a team of two instead of a team of one? That yeah, awesome. it was very reassuring and comforting and I think... I also felt validated. I think you you validated the, like how I was feeling and like how I was thinking and you understood how. I remember talking about that, oh, my swimsuit doesn't fit the right way or it doesn't fit the way I want it to fit. And having that, I don't even, I can't think of the word, but having something that like I'm in every day determine or make me feel a certain way of oh, it's a little snug today, something's up, what's wrong? And so I just remember bringing that up and you're like, no, that makes sense. But you gotta understand, it's not, it doesn't say anything about who you are and that maybe you needed more food that day because your body was telling you that you needed more food because you're burning thousands and thousands of calories. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. It was a lot of it, I think, you helped with changing my perspective of things and that's really cool i still to this day there will be situations in my life that will come up i'm like what would sarah say about this and i can't think of any of them right now but they happen so i think yeah it was nice to have you on my side and knowing that i could say what i needed to say and then you would respond however you felt and like also to help me and skew adjust my perspective of how i'm looking at it and like in a negative light and then helping me readjust that focus into can we take and can we step back and take into account that like you are an athlete you're doing school you're trying to be a friend you're trying to be all these things and you also need to eat so yeah so i think that was really nice to have yeah it sounds like for you it was really helpful to have a nice combination of mindset work a yeah. actual strategy because we talked a lot about especially with food like how to make meals ahead of time and be that honor your unique needs with your unique situation with your physical activity and with your yeah. style of being a student yeah so we had strategies for grocery shopping and meal creation and meal prep but we also talked about the mindset behind what you're eating and making sure i remember we talked about i think like breakfast or snacks or both we talked about really getting that down to a science yeah, you knew that you always had something available because your life is was really busy at the time and really mm -hmm. physically demanding. And so we had strategies. We had sessions where we talked about let's make your daily life easier. Let's make your yep. nutrition easy. Your movement was already obviously like 
intensity wise more than where it needed to be but let's have a really strong mindset behind that and really just optimizing all aspects of your wellness Mm -hmm. and tying them all into how you feel about them because a lot of what we talked about and a lot of the people that I work with identify this like so many of the people I work with call themselves perfectionists or people pleasers or both a lot of it for you in the beginning was feeling like even if it looks different every day even if it looks different in different parts of the year, like being in season versus out of season, trusting that you have the skills and the mindset to take really good care of yourself, even if that looks different every day, every month, every year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I remember I I had weird things because I couldn't eat too close to practice because I would it would hurt my stomach and I'd want to hurl. And I also wasn't a huge breakfast eater. I still am not huge on eating breakfast, <laughs> which is something I'm working on. But yeah, I, and I remember having my go squeezes always packed yeah. and fruit yeah. snacks ready to go because during a hard set, I would get hungry and I'm like, okay, now I need something. But it was just light enough to sustain. So really finding, again, like what healthy, both with mindset and with habit, looked like for you because that was different than what it looks like for you in the summer it's different from what it looked like in your life before this or after this it's different than your teammates because you have also a co-ed team yeah you have guys (laughs) and girls our bodies are very different especially when you're athletes and especially how they talk about their bodies how they think about their bodies everybody on the team was different so really being in that like social environment just figuring out this is what works for you and making that work and i feel like we we walked away from our work together, having a lot of clarity on a lot of questions essentially that you came in with about, again, I would bring it back to if you were doing enough or if you were doing the right things. Like we talked about food, gut health, digestion, your period, relationships, boundaries, social life, everything. And a lot of it was like, am I doing the right things? Am I doing enough? So having that clarity for a few months to figure out just a few months of us figuring out exactly what that looks like for you. And then I knew you before and I've Mm -hmm. known you since. I still see just this level of knowing yourself better than when we started and finding Mm -hmm. a lot of that identity that you were looking for in the beginning. So I would love if you can try and think back because it's been (laughs) long to what life was like when your first swim season ended because we stopped working together about halfway through your last season you i think it was a few like, more months yeah it was like the new year yeah like in just January. in January. but what was that being having your last practice having your last day having your last meet and then yeah. adjusting after graduation <laughs> There's a lot going on in my life when I finished swimming. I there were tears. There were a lot of tears. Of but I there's a photo of me and my coach after my last race of the mile on the last day of NCAA's and he had I remember first of all, I had a panic attack during the race. I remember being like, I'm gonna have to stop. Like I am gonna have to stop. But I didn't because I knew my coach would kill me and so many other people would kill me. But I got out of the pool and like all the girls that were there with me and my coaches, they were just like cheering. And I was like, oh my God, this is it. Holy crap. This is crazy. And I got out of the pool and I walked over to them and they all hugged me. But my head coach wasn't anywhere near me. And I was like, this is weird. And I see him like facing the wall, like towards the bleachers and he's like wiping his eyes and i'm like i like go over to him and i like push like i like make him like give me a hug and i'm like are you crying he goes i just got something in my eye and i was like you're such a little shit but yeah there's a photo of that happening and like looking back on it makes me like tear up but yeah it was yeah it was wild i like i can't remember if i cried during our last practice or not probably i remember like everything leading up to new max and then ncaa's i was like this is the last this is, an, this is another last this is the last fifth practice i'll have before me <laughs> it was just yeah it was a lot and honestly looking back on it i don't know how i that's a lot of emotional toll and i don't know how i swam and not cried but i somehow i did it but yeah and then i remember getting back to wheaton and i don't know we had fun we went out to hibachi and we were done swimming had a scorpion pole 
want to celebrate. But it was a good, it was fun to be with all my teammates and celebrate that. And I don't really think I thought about that it was my last season until the next season rolled around. Mm -hmm. Because up until that season started, it was just another summer break. And so it was normal. So yeah, that is definitely, it was definitely an adjustment last year. Just because like it was my first year not swimming. But I got to, I knew people on the team still. And so I got to go see them at New Max and everything, which is our championship meet. And that's so fun. And it's so fun to still be like, yeah, to still be involved with the team, but from a different perspective. And I'm like, thank God I'm not swimming the mile today. Like, you you got it, but I'm so glad I'm not doing it. Yeah. So that was like the ending of the swimming career. And then- Can I interrupt you? Yeah. Because this is such a, I remember us like texting about this or like messaging about this, maybe on Instagram, I don't know. Because I was keeping in touch with you because I wasn't working with you at this point. But we yeah. were leading up to this. And so I was curious how it was gonna go. <laughs> Had all the faith in you. But given our work together, which was a lot of mindset towards trusting yourself to figure out the future, adjusting to not being in such an active lifestyle anymore. Why do you think our work impacted the end of your season even when we weren't working together anymore what do you think was easier or better or stronger in those last practices those last meets those last dinners with the team yeah how do you think it it helped you i think i think it just helped with coming to terms with it it was bound to happen and i think yeah i don't it just yeah it was just comforting to know that everything was gonna be okay and that okay yeah you are gonna feel all these things but they're normal and you need to feel them in order to understand them and understand like why you're feeling them and what you can do to forward with these feelings and i think like specifically the work around like food and like body image has helped a lot especially just like after swimming like even now just like having a better relationship with food and i know i don't think i have i feel like i had a pretty like solid relationship with food but it was definitely a different one and it was definitely from the athlete relationship with food or yeah athletes relationship with food and now it's like food is like what I have to use to fuel me as like a human and that as an athlete and being an athlete but it's like very different from oh I'm eating this because I like need to replenish and yeah. refuel and recover my muscles so like I can keep doing everything then there's always the like oh my god I'm so hungry I need to eat this I yeah. can't wait to get this in my body but like, I didn't think about it hmm way i think now i'm like my appetite is lower and because i'm not burning all those calories and everything but it's just like how my body has adjusted but like i remember i still had the swimmer's appetite of needing to constantly be eating all the time and there's still times that i'm like that but like it's adjusted in a way that like has gone with what is happening in my world now I feel like my relationship with food has stayed the same and I feel like that I don't I think I would have questioned it more and been more in my head about it had I not worked with you yeah so it sounds like your physical eating habits have fluctuated naturally but often or multiple times but your mindset has stayed really steady yes yeah that's awesome yeah thanks what's our body image like these days because it's been a long time body image is a, a journey I have body image thoughts every single day myself and I'm yep. years into this work it is my profession to help other people with it I've said this to you a thousand times and I say this to all my clients but it's not about being quote unquote perfect at it it's again yep. a lot of responding to thoughts and shifting reframing mindsets but what has really stuck with you from our work as far as how you approach your body image day to day yeah that's a good question because I definitely still struggle with it from time to time but i would say that i'm gonna eat something because i want to eat it like i i don't feel like i restrict myself in terms of that and i'm like okay this might make me bloated but i don't care i don't know i just yeah it i would say i live life more 
freely around yeah. food and just understand that my body's gonna do what my body needs to do and it's not because i'm not good enough or i'm not pretty enough or whatever it's just my body doing its body things to keep me alive which is crazy to say out loud because i don't really think we i really time to pause and think about we eat to live and our bodies yeah. have existed for not all physical bodies, but we've evolved for millions of years and we've made it this far. Yeah. We can trust this whole system. Yeah. To take care and, of us. Yeah. I think that's what and, a lot of people lose touch with. Yeah. And it's crazy. It's always, you got to trust in yourself and believe in yourself. And it, it's hard, but like when you say your body, we trust it. We trust ourselves. We believe in ourselves because we're going to keep doing until, yeah, I don't know. It's wild revelations, but. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have one more question for you. Okay. And then I will let us all go to sleep. You can start your day because we're in different time zones. That's crazy. When we were first going to start working together, you were a college student. You were not in your big girl job yet. You didn't have that stability. The finances of working with somebody like me is always a big investment in ourselves. And it takes both financial investment, but also a lot of self-trust and faith in Mm -hmm. yourself to take that leap. If you're thinking about yourself, because I know on our discovery call, we talked about finances. We talked about the way to make it work for you. I'm super flexible and accommodating with people as much as I can be if they have the drive to do the work and you did. But thinking about like that moment where you were hesitant and then you took the plunge anyway. Yeah. And thinking about how your life has been affected since because of this work. What would you say to that version of yourself in that hesitation moment? Yeah, I think it is what I said to myself, but just do it. Fuck it. Like, I'm going to do it. It's going to be good. I'm going to, I'm excited. It's new. I didn't know what to expect. I had seen your work online, but I didn't really know what it was going to look like. So I think I would just say to myself, just do it. It's going to, you're going to, you're going to learn something regardless, whether that's, oh, I'm broke or you learn like all the wonderful things that I learned. Yeah. Just do it. Pull the, pull the trigger. Yeah. Was it worth it? Yes, it was worth it. Always. And I have you in my corner now. Forever and ever. Now I'm on your team forever. Yes. Yeah. We love that. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Like I said, we've caught up so many times. I can't (laughs) believe we've known each other for almost two and a half years. I'm going to call it two years and four months. We looked it up. I can't believe it. And it's been, I will cry, always cry. It's been amazing seeing you grow both so rapidly in our work together because you've Mm -hmm. had that support system, but also since knowing when I talk to you and I hear about new relationships and new jobs and really exciting things that we built a lot of those foundations together and it just makes me feel like so attached and so proud of everything you've done for yourself so I hope you're really proud of yourself too and I hope that this has been how has it felt talking about this because it's been so long yeah it's been good it's funny because I went to a Wheaton swim meet this weekend so I'm having a lot of those reminiscing moments but it's been good it makes me want to get back in the pool hell yeah yeah. You always can't get back in the pool. I know. You have that diversity in your identity now. You don't have to be just one thing. That chapter doesn't have to be closed completely or exactly. forever. You are a really complex, diverse, incredible person. And you have so much that you've already accomplished and so much more that you will accomplish. Thank you. You're so welcome. <laughs>